Well, this book is awful. Hey, welcome everyone to Grim After Dark. My name is John, and this is your weekly rundown of the last week in the Warhammer community, uh, where we talk to the best players and content creators from around the world. Back with a bang! Uh, Taylor Pearson joins us to share his love of Harlequins, uh, a lore lowdown, a, a lore down, if you will, uh, on the players and troops and what draws him back to being a literal clown player. Uh, my co-host today needs some introduction. He's the terror of the mid-tables. I can see his face right now, and it's really mean for me to try and read and see that. Uh, as someone who I'm in 37 separate group chats with, that's probably a true fact, and I probably butt-dial him way too much, it's Danny McDevitt. That was the difference. Hey, John. Face. Good to be here tonight. One. Yeah. You are you are full of faces tonight. I am. I really like it's, that. Look, this tonight's gonna be a silly face night. We talked about it a little bit earlier. We make it some weird face tonight, so get those screenshots ready. You absolute clown. Uh I love it. Uh Daddy, you've known me for a while. Uh as an insane person, uh, I occasionally Photoshop weird things. Uh for, for weirder reasons. Uh my phone reminded me of this exact picture. Uh, and I'm wondering if you can describe it for our listeners. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, an actual depiction of me beating you, uh, <laughs> circa one year ago and you being real mad about it. Was it? <laughs> no, I don't know. I just made no. that up, but I assume um, that it had something to do with my Necron. I, I guess like, I don't know. So, so yeah, for, for, for listeners here, it is a Necron overlord, uh, holding a string of balloons. <laughs> Uh, while blam, blam, blaming against a donkey, uh, robot chicken humping robot style. Uh, I wanted to bring this up because it came up as a memory for me. I have no recollection of even making this thing, let alone uh, why it exists. Um, I was really hopeful you did. John, you're a mystery wrapped in an enigma uh, tied to a riddle, and so no one really knows. Okay. If you guys can think of a reason someone would make that, please let me know. Uh, don't just send me <laughs> messages saying, uh, why would you make that? I, I want to know uh, specifically why that exists. Uh, cocaine is a hell of a drug. That is a, a, not an accurate, but a very funny response. Um, hey, we here at Grim After Dark love it when people like, subscribe, and follow the Frontline Gaming Network and leave us five-star reviews. And um, We love nothing more than really polarizing opinions, uh, as I found here. Uh, from a couple of reviews from this year. Oh, uh, Review one. Some great shows with Thursday shows. Signals and Chapter Tactic. Not more than one episode of Chapter Tactics now. Chapter <laughs> Tactics is singular. Uh, but it's annoying. It's all on one channel. Just spams with a bunch of not-so-good filler shows making it hard to listen to. Um, Danny, you, you have something to say about being a not-so-good filler show? Yeah, so three stars. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're not that annoyed. They're just like medium annoyed that this stuff is happening. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's the an average level of enjoyment. This person that they're excited about is clearly ultramarines. So, I mean, I think that speaks like, or speaks maybe me. Black Templars. There, it's a pretty good chapter tactic. Yeah. Um, and then this the the second review here, which was kind of the duality of man that I call it here, is a grim after dark is the S asterisk asterisk T, uh, which I don't know what that means, but it says I love the network. Best part is you do not need to listen to everything. Uh, one, that's a lie. You absolutely do need to listen to everything. Um, my favorite is Grim, Grim After Dark Tough. Amazing humor. Uh, Danny, Grim After Dark Tough, is that kind of like our UFC Fight Club style uh, episode? I mean, look, they know they know what goes on behind closed doors here. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. You guys a don't see it. Physical but in the abuse, pre emotional uh, abuse. In the white screen. Things. It the makes post white screen. It's just us telling each other how we really feel about each other, and it's it's super mean. Yeah. Um, Danny, how would you review this show in the style of an iTunes review? Um, I would say <laughs> uh, laughs six out of ten, jokes three out of ten, explanations of jokes five out of ten. <laughs> 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 but there is a lot of explanations of jokes. Yeah, just and to so make all sure together, you really understand the humor. Yeah, all together, that's like an 11 out of 10, so I'm pretty happy with that. Man, you're better at math than me. I'm going to trust you on that one here. <laughs> uh, hey, so Duncan Rhodes always confused me with the idea that I should paint Abaddon black over Chaos Black Spray, as uh, shown here with this classic uh, Archer joke. 
Um, so, Danny, are they the same, or is one black uh, and one a slightly darker black? Have you ever painted Abaddon black over Chaos black before? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. I don't know. I might just have bought, purchased so many pots of Chaos black that I still am using those. Um, <laughs> I just assumed that, like, you're like, it is a three color minimum. It's Chaos black, Abaddon black, <laughs> uh, null oil. <laughs> black painted with sprayed black painted with black washed with black perfect yes absolutely uh, i just really like that one and also any callback to an archer joke is like and a good perfect for me yeah it's a good one uh more amazing comments found by self-proclaimed fan matt austin uh with his perfect reaction to female space marines uh female space marines of course are the dog whistle to every internet opinion artist uh, someone said, what somebody does is their thing, and I don't care. But female space marines in the lore are not canon for one thing. Uh, gene seed is made from the DNA from the Primarch, and those are male. You cannot combine male and female DNA, as far as I know. It's genetics. Uh, Daddy, there's a lot to unpack in that comment. Mm -hmm. uh, your take. 100% uh, true, John. Um, all of that is scientifically accurate. I actually checked it um, with frontline writer, almost a scientist, Nathan H., Mm -hmm. um and he, he told is a me he, yeah he told me i was legitimately correct and that uh it's 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 not only is it the lore but also it's the truth that is and i checked with both my mother and my father and they both told me that it was impossible to combine dna never had sex even once <laughs> not even once which is a really weird way to find out you're adopted uh so <laughs> Harlequins are the big topic tonight, and Hellstorm Wargaming seems to think that they are 40k's next big problem, which uh, Mikey here put up his video saying that Harlequins 40k's next big problem. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to Taylor and Danny about this in depth tonight, but I will remind people it's only a big problem if people abuse it, and thankfully Mikey from Hellstorm isn't one to bandwagon onto the next big thing. <laughs> He's a paragon of restraint, John. Um, paragon. As you can see here. Right. Yeah. As you can see, definitely not holding enough Void Weavers to make one tailor happy. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I saw this little guy, uh, and I thought of at least three times I bought entire new sets of dice uh, after a bad roll or two, Danny. Uh, mm -hmm. Danny, have there been any times that you've just abandoned entire sets of dice because of terrible rolls? Oh, John, I have some rituals that I like to perform in oh, order please to tell me. encourage my dice to perform better. Were, were you there the day that there's like six of us that sacrificed one dice to the fire and made the other dice watch <laughs> so that they would roll better? No, uh, I haven't seen that, but I do really like that. Uh, that's a great one. Um, what I have done is lined all of the other dice into a circle around <laughs> one singular bad rolling dice and smashed it with a hammer. Um also, as a paragon of good sportsmanship, uh, my opponent's dice once were rolling so hot uh, that I grabbed them, stuck them in my mouth, and spit them at him. <laughs> that's a real story. I did that. That's a real story. I'm going to ask a question that's going to be really, like, Alaska-specific here. Uh, was that John Miller's dice? No, 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 no. It was... <laughs> It was probably the nicest guy you've ever played, Tyson. Have you ever played Tyson before? Oh, he's like, dude, why would you do that to Tyson? Because I'm an asshole, John. I'm an asshole. You are. That's great, though. <laughs> That's great. And uh, Tamadachi Express, putting them in a the microwave, while that does solve the problem of bad rolls, it creates so many other problems. <laughs> uh, we don't have enough podcasts to go on for that apology tour. Have you ever tried um, to roll a rhombus? <laughs> Just once or twice. Yeah. Uh, hey, Danny, this is going to be very... Okay, this is the kind of joke I love because it's here to just pop you. Uh, no oh. one else is going to really appreciate it. Uh, but celebration is in order. Uh, as I noticed this... Uh, I ordered my Frontline Gaming table this week, but I noticed this amazing <laughs> update to the Frontline Gaming web store. Oh. Uh, Danny, can you mm. explain to me why this, the, the, the producer Rich is going to put up here, is so exciting to, to both of us? <laughs> I will once the end puts it up. I don't know. I don't know what's happening right now. Um, uh, it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's, hold it's, on. It's, you know what? I'm going to move on to this Tamadachi. Uh, this Tamadachi quote. This is amazing. Oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. okay. Uh, referencing the microwave dice. That's how you get your. That's how you get into game changers. <laughs> 
Oh man, <laughs> oh, amazing. That's true. You love uh, to see we're it. Gonna, we're going to assume that, that our producer is alive and well on the other side. Um, maybe mm-hmm. he's getting an herbal tea. Uh, but what it is, Danny, is I went on there and the banner along the top now says free shipping for contiguous U.S. orders over $100. Finally. Uh, what is the importance of that uh, for you and I, uh, specifically his former, uh, your former Alaska bound person? So in case people don't know, when you say that things are part of the continental United States, uh, that includes Alaska as Alaska is in the continent of North America. So quite frequently in the past, Frontline has made the assertion that there's free shipping in the continental United States, um, but then precru- pre- uh, precluded Alaska from partaking in that. Uh, that's special. Now it says contiguous United States, which includes the states that are touching each other. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. there we go, Richard. Thank you. Um, which is <laughs> factually accurate and correct. Um, I'm really glad to see that uh, Reese has taken my bitching over various different media sources for literal you, years. <laughs> years this. of complaining, emails, even hosting shows for them uh, mm-hmm. won't make this change. Uh, but yeah, time I can't wait for that bridge from Kelly to Hawaii. Is a statement of things that will never happen. Uh, hi, Rich. How are you doing? I just wanted to apologize. That joke, you murdered that. I, by the way, Danny, I'm proud of you. You held it together the whole time. I did. Yeah. I'm the, I think that's in the code of conduct, John, I think, right? You always have to hold a joke no matter what. Excuse you. That's the style guy. The that's code in, of conduct. That's is, in John Quinnell's code yeah, of conduct my, is, to hold, yeah, my a, personal is to hold a joke forever. Yes. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Okay, let's go back to the there joke. We go. Beautiful. Hey, there's mental jokes. Crap. It's kind of uh, to say. Hey, uh, if you caught the amazing Cherokee Open, uh, the stream was hosted by Joe at War Games Live. And if you wondered how he can improve his streams any more than they already are, uh, fear not, as he was spotted at the Art of War Studios uh, integrating this uh, a fully functional Richard Siegler, uh, which, while that's going to increase wow. his technical content, is going to make the results a little bit more predictable, I think, in the long run, right, Danny? Um, yeah, I mean, I think once, once you add artificial intelligence to a lot of things in automation, uh, it only gets better as you can see here in the, in that picture, um, adding those kind of technological breakthroughs like a uh, Richard Siegler, um, really helps to, you know, it really brings the stream together. <laughs> yeah. He's got to watch out for his evil twin, Dick Siegler. Uh, oh yeah. You want to steer clear of that one. And Hey. Danny, speaking of Art of War, they held the hardest RTT ever uh, for seven of the competitors and a nice weekend with his friends for Richard Siegler. Uh, his <laughs> insert army here defeated all opponents, young, old, and Brad Chester at the event. Uh, <laughs> Danny, is this Tau win um, over Eldari? Because the finals ended up being Richard Siegler with this Tau um, after Richard took off uh, Jack Harpster with Custodes, who's just coming off a big win. Uh, mm-hmm. Over Blake Law and his Tyranids, and then Brad Chester, of course, beat Nick Nanavati round one, uh, and then John Lennon with his sisters. It was this kind of a, a take of the sign uh, that the tower overpowered and Aldari are just kind of an okay book, or is it just Siegler doing Siegler things? Great question, John. Obviously, as a tower player, um, I can tell you with certainty that the tower are not overpowered. <laughs> they don't have a close to seventy percent win rate. And uh, they're totally fine and need zero nerfs. So really important that they don't get anything. It's just Siegler being Siegler. He's the best. It doesn't matter what army he takes. He could have been playing uh, Chaos Demons and it would have been totally fine. I'm going to ask you this one thing here, Danny. If mm-hmm. Tower's so powerful, how come we started at 10.40 p.m. Eastern tonight? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Crazy things. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> moving on. Frontline Gaming's Bay Area Open is next up. It's going to be May 27th through the 29th at KublaCon. Uh, KublaCon is a fully-fledged convention that's also hosting BA, uh, the Bay Area Open. And so your tickets need to be bought through their website. However, all of the sweet Bay Area Open merchandise, the dice, the objective markers, 
um, all of the t-shirts, the fun stuff like that, you'll want to hit up the Frontline Gaming website. Uh, KubelCon organizers have told us that it looks like 40K has a great turnout so far, and for good reason. Uh, this is the longest-running Frontline Gaming event with a very loyal set of players who attend each and every year. Uh, remember to book your room through the uh, block booking link. Man, I hate when those bees are close together like that. Uh, as this not only gets you the discounted rate, but helps KubelCon continue to reserve all this space for the event. Oh, and remember... Get your tickets now, or, or like in like 45 minutes when we're done, uh, before the price increases on March 11th. Uh, our creative director and overlord, Val Heffelfinger, had this very funny thing to say about those price increases. March price increase, who are you, GW? Hey, ooh, I think is how that's pronounced. Yeah. No, that's right, John. You've nailed the Canadian accent perfectly. <laughs> Because that was what was wrong with that one. There Ew. was a Canadian accent there. Um, and then, uh, hey, perfect. Uh, Danny, why don't you, while well, Tamadachi Express actually bring back Rainbow Sparkle, I think is going to be our hashtag from here on out. Uh, because, yeah, that Rainbow <laughs> Sparkle, very popular. Ever since he put his text priest back on. I just hear unpopular. Richard in my ear, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Oh, oh, Tricky Dick, the Sparkly Rainbow Unicorn. Where, when will you come back? Uh, Danny, why don't you take us through uh, with our, our guest, our most frequent companion on these mm -hmm. Grim After Darks. It is, is that true? Is, is it, he our most is. frequent companion? I really like that. That's, that's, a, that's a great metric. Um, so you may know him uh, from appearances not only on this cast, but around the internet. Uh, making his opinion on all kinds of lore subjects known. Uh, but in addition to these things, someone is breathing very heavily into a microphone <laughs> in my ear. <laughs> if you were at the Las Vegas Open and heard a scream, then chances are you've heard of him. Yeah, if you heard, yeah, if you saw someone motion like, uh, in an extreme and and seemingly, uh, with the inability to stop making dabs, uh, you probably you pro you probably know exactly who we're talking about. And tonight, if you heard someone scream that they why can't they go to the aquarium on day two of the forty k GT or major? <laughs> you may have heard of it. So we're pleased tonight to welcome uh, <laughs> Taylor Taylor Peterson. Peterson, what the? F All right, that's fair. Oh, did yeah. I just out you? <laughs> Do you no, want, did you want me to keep you your last name a secret? Hey, everybody, write it you, down. You can, well, like you, you, can, you said. I, you said Peterson for one, which Peterson? is an, another friend's. Yeah. Fake oh my god! Well, guess what, Taylor? Your <laughs> your your, your <laughs> no, identity Peterson. is intact, and god. you're also related to Joe now. So uh, that's, I hope yeah, you I hear that's, that. I hear that's not good. I hear no. that's like suboptimal. Yeah, it's really bad, we, dude. It's bad. <laughs> we cop god. we copyrighted that name, so FLG can use it in, in perpetuity. Kind of mm -hmm. like how in the the nineties, uh, when Diesel and Razor Ramon left at WWF or WCW, they replaced them with fake Diesel and fake Razor Ramon. I and, absolutely know what all of that means, like for and, sure. And Taylor, since we since we did copyright your name, I just wrote up a case memo <laughs> on uh, on no. uh, on intellectual property infringement and fair use. <laughs> Right. Uh, just watch out uh, if you decide sure. to use Taylor and other in other formats, uh, <laughs> you might get slapped with a lawsuit. Oh no! That's but on the plus side, relevant. on the plus side, that'll be like a midterm level lawsuit, not a final. Yeah, it level won't be lawsuit, good. So it'll be it'll be okay. <laughs> I mean, if you can yeah. C if you can afford a lawyer, it'll probably be okay. <laughs> I heard Danny's looking for clients. Uh, anyway, you are here tonight. Uh, I had the thought because uh, what well, what. That is very true. Uh, we're talking Harlequins. Uh, they're the talk of the town, the busted thing coming into Valadari. Uh, we saw from the Hellstorm Wargaming review that, that uh, Mikey has bought a, a whole lot of them. So we kind of want to get a better sense of, of what a clown is. Uh, Taylor, what is a clown? Oh, that's me, dude. That's that's me. Dude, uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you're tucked in right now. <laughs> We're putting to bed any rumors or ill will, and also our guest, dude. I am, I'm cozy. I got my drink. I'm like firmly tucked in. Like it's it's tight. So cozy, was he? <laughs> That's how I have to be to talk about really anything. Like just complete silence. By the way, yeah. 
Exactly. This is what happens when we start late. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's why I always bring a blanket over to your house. <laughs> no one ever thought it was weird till now, but I mean, whatever. Yeah. Dude, yeah, I'm in bed by 7 p.m. every weekday. <laughs> just... A millisecond I can. Dinner is <laughs> over. I'm in bed. I'm going to sleep. Oh, man. All it's right. not depression. <laughs> it's just a good schedule. <laughs> I'm just going through a rut. It's I'm just having a bad time. I don't you know whatever the the press people say, which is me. But uh, uh, oh, people God. actually did recognize me at LVO, which was very strange. All three of you. Um, and you oh, may. Yeah, yeah, you may have heard my abject wailing as I plummeted <laughs> further and further down the table. <laughs> How did you uh, end up at LVO? Man, I went two for infinite depression. Uh, I, uh, I brought, I brought, uh, Siegler's list except worse. And then I got like unbelievably blasted, um, the, the first night after I lost my first game, uh, shout out to my opponent, uh, aggressively clocking me. <laughs> uh, uh, Do you really clock out? No, I did not clock out. Oh, okay. Um, she, she was just super upset at her previous game. Uh, for for like going to time and like they didn't play enough games, mm-hmm. so I get to the table and she like fucking puts down a clock and is like, "You're on a clock, by the way," real aggressively. And then I played really badly and lost because I'd never played on a clock before. No, uh... <laughs> we're pro <laughs> players, to... guys. Yeah, for sure. Not to call her out or anything. She was fun. Yeah, uh, I just, she... <laughs> just want to let you know that. Yeah, re- that was your one F uh, bomb. For the show. Oh, did I swear? Uh, I didn't yeah. even know. Yeah, that was oh my one. God. Thanks, I, I just, I just want to make sure that you know that you only have one more f bomb for the show, guys. Thanks. Oh, one more. One? Okay. Yeah. One more. Fuck. Man, I thought no. I, w- I thought oh, I was out. Is. Man, I love swearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, uh, I fucking love to swear. <laughs> oh fuck, we're pulling it off. It's terrible. This is no longer PG thirteen, guys. I think we're talking about like, clowns or something. I don't know. I don't know what a clown is. I hear that. Okay. So clowns are actually, they're elves. They're all of the types mm-hmm. of elves from Exodites, uh, Drakari, uh, Assyriani, Corsairs. Um, and sometimes they just walk into a side alley and then a shadow seer grabs them and is like, hey, you want to like lose all of your individual will to serve the, the big clown in the sky? And they're like, mm-hmm. I mean, life really sucks. So yes, I would love that. That sounds awesome. Can I oh just my say, God. like preparing for this, uh, I did the mm. bad thing. I went to Lexicanum uh, and found a oh, wonderful yeah. article. Right. Um, where the first part here, which had me laughing, like doubled over laughing uh, during my break at work, which confused and, and concerned a lot of people. Um, but it said they first appeared amid the hedonistic debauchery of the pre-fall Eldar to perform their ancient mythic dances. True. Um, trying to remind people uh, what they were throwing away. However, many amongst their audiences reacted with hostility, forcing these early Harlequins to become proficient in combat. So to me, they're like the dare people you would bring to school to be like, hey guys, drugs aren't cool. You gotta be like us. You know, and then everyone just kicked the shit out of them. Yeah. So then they were like, well, we gotta right. fight back. Yeah, we gotta dance our way out of this. Yeah, they're <laughs> the D... The D and dare stands for interpretational dance. I've had, mm. I have heard that. Yeah. Um, and but then <laughs> when you go to the school and they're like, you know, you do the, you know, you do the dance, and they know drugs are bad, but they don't, they don't listen. What they do is they pull out a Glock. See, when <laughs> they pull out the Glock, you have to pull out your blade because while they were studying the Glock, you were studying the blade and the anti gravity <laughs> belt that lets you do a quintuple somersault thirty feet in the air. Look, and then Dare is them. very pro Second Amendment, is what I heard, and so I they are that, like, yeah. they'll just shoot you straight yeah, up. Hey kids, they'll they'll pull out a sword. Don't skin your slaves and then have orgies with them. True. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect, John. You really nailed. <laughs> I nailed that early Harlequin lore. Uh, Big right clown there. in the sky said to just not do that, please. But you did anyway. Now there's a, a gross purple thing eating. I uh, we were right. You guys suck. Yeah, that's yeah. all I gotta say. So I'm not gonna say they're a cult, but they survived uh, the fall no, of the Alari, uh by hiding in their compound away from everything. Yeah, yeah. They um uh the big the big you know the big suck was happening, 
And they're like, well, we can't save anyone. They're all big hedonists now, and we don't really vibe with that. Uh, so we're going to take our interpretational dance and artistic college degrees to the library, and they, the big jocks can't hurt us there. And then they did that. And then, oh. you know, they were mostly fine. So, okay, yeah. let me put this into terms that other people can understand and kind of like restate that, but for real world. It's right. like if John, with his artistic degree, decided to move to Idaho <laughs> to avoid ice. Is that does that all track, John? <laughs> Man, I, I mean, thought you meant ice like the stuff on the ground because you no, know no, no, in like, a cold like, place, like immigration. But then. <laughs> immigration. Uh, as, as a beautifully legal permanent resident of this amazing. Country. Yeah, yeah. Thank for you now. For, yeah. for now, here. yeah. You never know, man. The political situation <laughs> changes, and the wrong guy gets in power, and who knows what happens. You could say the wrong thing, John, and you'd be out of here, John. You I always in my place if you want. I always joked with one person that the reason I wasn't an, an actual naturalized citizen and I was staying a permanent resident was if, if shit hit the fan in this country, I could always move back to the UK, right? And that was my thing. And then when Brexit happened, my friend was like, you still sticking by that story, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to go now, John? Yeah. South America? Philippines? You do great there. Argentina? Heck yeah, just all over the place. Uh, that, that's me. Um, yeah. Done. yeah aldari yeah, hiding yeah. from the big bad in the wor- web where you're working on the interpretive yeah. dance right uh, they come out like harlequins they don't wear soul stones do they no they don't they just trust that the big clown in the sky will grab their soul before slanesh can get it and it seems like they're correct we also have no proof that they're correct um we never no one's ever seen kegarak Segarak, chegarak as they say Cedric. um Cedric, Cedric the there we go. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, yeah. I do think John is uh, like a Twilight pathway. Not Twilight. Um, yeah, like there's the light and the dark and the Twilight. I think John is a Twilight Shadow Seer. Because I'm the worst Ooh. of the three. Right. You are the worst of the three. And Whoa. Twi- so, I don't I know think, if that's accurate. I think it is. I think light and dark are way stronger. I think okay, well, they, let's, let's let's hard yeah, cut we'll, to, we'll to save that end for game. The part ah, later garbage. No, well, hard cut to in game. Sure, we we can go back and forth here. It's part I of our know, plan. Man. We planned it this way, man. So right now we've separated to light, dark, and twilight. He's is kind of the three man plays. Really agile, like like a yeah. ninja. Yeah, yeah. I do. I've seen John do three flips in a row. He's really flexible, you guys. Yeah. Right. Like he'll straight up do the splits at the next event you see him at. Ask him to do it for you. He totally will. <laughs> it's like double jointed in his spine it's very strange yeah it's it's actually it's kind of weird it it's really scary to look at yeah now really regretting sharing my art with you guys so, <laughs> well, <that's true> you. <laughs> super mean of you didn't like that one bit i'm sorry um, yeah I, we, we were down up we have the light dark and twilight um p- people are <laughs> yeah right time adult you whoa, whoa you're getting dangerously close to actually giving 40k advice yeah we're, we're ah. topping our last week's episode where we gave great advice and some fantastic lists that people really responded to well and enjoying <laughs> by just doing a little circle jerk for their friends the week after it's just like it's it just works this, this is just like real life dude yeah it's just like uh-huh. real life but yeah, so so Danny, Twilight, Dark, and Light are being the three main masks that, that are around right now. Which is the best and which is the worst for you uh, with your extra reviewer knowledge with the extra well, weeks of reading? Yeah, oh, sure. Okay. Uh, so, like, <laughs> uh, the different the different mask source, Sedaths, as they're, as they're known in uh, the nerd tongue that is Eldar. Right. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh I, I don't know. They're they're different, right? So like, I yeah. think Twilight gives you some pretty good characters. Sure. Um, like the Twilight Fang Master in Twilight is actually pretty legit. Still bangs and for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Uh, like wounding on a two plus. Uh, if you give him what is that, King of Beggars King, or uh, the, the thing? Yeah, yeah whatever the thing know, that lets him wound on a two. Yeah, the thing. The two. Yeah, yeah the thing he yeah. gets. Um, also their Warlord trade is pretty good. Uh, right. for command points like just getting a free command point every turn if you really want to that's good uh, is is pretty pog um and uh yeah they're they're good at that uh dark air close combat experts man their traits are amazing um the mm. warlord trait is fine uh their stratagem is kind of the um yeah the the, the strength in dark is absolutely the trait for sure yeah oh, it's so good 
Yeah, and that's uh, they, they get to so Twilight gets plus one attack when they charge, and then they right. also pilot and consolidate other? five. Oh yeah, that's oh man, that's so good. It is really um, good. <laughs> uh, and strong. then yeah, yeah, and then the uh, uh, the dark gets to fight on death for free all the time, yeah, which is all the time so good. Yeah, um, do it. and then uh, they get an extra AP on their weapons, uh, which is also very good. Extremely um, relevant with their ignore AP strap. Or, right, me, right. Ignore invulm. Yeah, exactly. It, like, and they have uh, since the Harlequin weapons are all AP minus two, going to minus three is actually a pretty good jump. Right. Um, and really makes the most mileage, as Taylor was saying that if that ignores invulm strat. And then uh, light give you a really good defensive ability, and that they have like transhuman to hit versus ranged attacks over twelve inches away. Which combo really well? Which combos really well with the uh, uh, with the Shadow Seer uh, ability to make yourself six inches six inches further away? Just being um, a boat as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then they For can advance, monsters. and all their boats can shoot at full ballistic skill, which or shoot at all. Every, everything, right? Everything can do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which um, is dope with fusion pistol boats and things like that. Like that's that's pretty solid. And their their stratagem is amazing. Uh, really good. Actually, so is the relic. Every uh, so I, I rate I, I personally rate light the highest because it has a really strong trait, good mm-hmm. warlord trait, good relic, and a really good strat. It's the it's the best overall package. Yeah, um, I, I might feel that, differently. Actually. I might feel differently if Tau weren't so good. Yeah, um, if Tau weren't like the thing you have to be able to beat, um, I probably would feel Darkest the strongest because then Custodes would be the thing you have to beat, and Dark is really fuck is really excuse me really hecking good into Custodes. <laughs> Um, and I feel light is or twilight, excuse me, is just uh not super strong into either. And since those are the two things you must build to beat right now, those are where I think the actual strength of the army is. I don't think twilight is bad under any yeah. circumstances. An extra yeah. an extra attack and five inch piling consolidate is big me is big money, big large good, but not as good as the other stuff. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I would say that's probably pretty fair. Um. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, Twilight is. Oh yeah, their 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 stratagem is good too. Actually, mm-hmm. like Twilight, yeah, they're 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 still fine. Like yeah, they're good. Play sure. what you want, right? Yeah, um, I think then, I think you can. Yeah, I think you can do weird stuff for the book. Um, this this question here kind of more centered towards Danny, but uh, obviously Taylor, we're going to pull you in here as well. In your GW shill opinion, uh, what unit do you like the most? Um, why is it the most expensive Harlequin unit currently in stock at GamesWorkshop.com? I had jokes on you. No units are in stock at GamesWorkshop.com. Yeah, you, but... you think you can buy those models? Not a chance, dude. Try again. Oh. But no. starting with you, Danny, what is, what is the, the strongest unit uh, in, in the Harlequin uh, book? Or Harlequin half of the book? Uh, I don't know. I guess, like, I, all right. So the strongest unit that I like is going to be the troop master. Um, just because I, I like, I could say the void, we- the, like the void weaver is the best one. Cause probably objectively it is. Um, but like, I, I just think it's really under costed right now. Uh, the troop master is just good. He's just, re- he's just so good. He's so good. He is. He's awesome. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like the answer wanted here is the void weaver. I don't Death know. If, I don't know. no, you you love you some death jesters. The people on goonhammer.com tell me that three death jesters in a boat is good every day of my life, and every day of my life the void gets bigger. So <laughs> I refuse this. Be gone. I just okay. I have this amazing picture, by the way, of you in your bed, which thankfully you're providing with us right now. Yeah, dude. For but sure. You, you kind of you're you're woken up not by an alarm, but by a phone call, and they're like, "What?" And you're like, "Hey, it's Grover Goonhammer." Three death jesters in a boat, and you're like, "Oh God, no!" Slam my. the phone down it's, angrily. It's three a.m., James. I type angry comments into their Discord. That's the only way. Stop calling. I, well, yeah, he won't every day. Uh, um, Matt. but I th- personally, I think still, as I've always thought about the the uh, clown codex, it's the troop, just the regular troop that's the strongest. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's now, it's really good. As a related follow up question, Taylor, oh. do you feel like the omission of the core keyword on troops is? This is a question from chat from Hyperbunny ninety nine. Mm. Do you think that that right. is uh, intentional? I think that is flatly a mistake. Yeah. Um, I, the idea that the only thing in the book that is core would be the bikes is silly. Yeah. I think. Um, 
So I'm going to play it as if they have core. If someone wants to fight me on it, fine, whatever. Uh, but oh, I you're going to cheat the by not playing rules as written. Yes, I am going to tell you that you can. I'm going to go to that ITC tournament this weekend that we're going to, and I'm just going to straight up cheat. I'm going to show people in the book that says they don't have core. And I'm just going to cheat. So you're like, <laughs> oh, look, watch do out, you see this watch here? Out for that. You're going to be like, well, actually, I have the prop here right there for it. It's like, do you see this oh. here? Uh, you're like, uh, three people recognize me at LVO. Uh, I'm right. Do you have any idea who, how important I am? Because I don't. Do you know? <laughs> who am I? I don't know, dude. <laughs> I forget more I things am. every day. The, oh, the memory no. hole gets bigger. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about uh, the Webway gates being so very, very good now, Taylor? Oh, I hate them. I, it's, I cannot imagine a model I want to play with less. Uh, really? Yeah, I I don't know. I just I just have something in my body that just reviles them. Isn't it the um, fact that they're currently like two hundred bucks for on eBay for one? Oh God, it, that doesn't help for sure. Scalpers <laughs> be gone for me. Can I just um, say that I think it's the, I think that it's like not only really cool in in the game, but also like it gives the Eldar like a real fluff reason to be in that particular like battlefield. Sure. So, like, it's thematic in that way too. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty hype about him. If you could kill it, maybe I would feel better about it. I don't like. Um, so, the way I envision that Eldar is going to play is they're going to put all of their artillery, their nine shadow weavers, and their three <laughs> night spinners or whatever. They're going to put all of that behind the Webway Gate, right? And then you have to get close to Webway Gate, and when you do. Um, 3,000 points of combat units are going to fall out and do mm. 14,000 <laughs> mortal wounds to your army or whatever. <laughs> you know, I haven't read this codex. That is this part of the when, codex you're, when you're like, when you're like, hey, why is your army 17,000 points? You're like, I have the book right here. Yeah, the book is, I have the book. Don't worry about it this week. Yeah, I, have, I, I have the book. You can see the book. You can't, I won't, I mean, I'm not going to show you the rule, but you can see the book. Yeah. So. You're like I have uh, an appearance uh, on a podcast that I have right. to really prepare for, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use these rules here. <laughs> and that that line of play just seems like something that will annoy me, um, as we also have approximately 40 billion Eldar players in this meta. Um, I will have to deal with that every day of my life. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm not super hype about that. I'm not super hype that you can like place the gate in weird ways. I would prefer yeah. you, you have to do the arch yeah. thing. Right? It should have to be the arch. I totally agree with that. You right. can stack it. You can do butt to butt. You don't have to do tip to tip. So yeah, tip to tip butt. is what I want. It right? should it's always not... be tip to tip, It should John. always be tip to tip. You should definitely dock your webway gates. That's Whoa. a big important thing. That's what, you, that's what you say when you place it on the table. You say docking the webway gate. It's docking. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's where you're trying to get a psychological advantage over your opponent. You phrase it like that, and you provide pictures to show why you're using the word docking for it. It's fine. Isn't we didn't that, say the F word. Heck and heck, we did not. Isn't that the the phase? It's called the docking phase when you put your models on the table? <laughs> what is that? No, no, that's Taylor. Specifically, that's a Tau rule. Oh, okay. Drones that's, get to dock. Right. Oh. On the transports. That's how they get all the air bursts. Man, it's, this is it's when we need. It. It's a yeah. lot of docking. <laughs> oh, Tamadochi, thank you so much. That's not what I heard in Requiem for a Dream, and now I have to watch that movie again uh, after spending three days getting happy enough to to watch it because it's an instant bummer. Um, something interesting back to the lore part of, of the Harlequins there I saw True. Um, was that you can lose a bet then have to become a Harlequin. Yeah, uh, they'll they're right. So they're they're all about obviously tricks and games and stuff. So like, if you I mean if you bet against a, a, like a troop master or a shadow seer and you lose the bet, like what do you think is happening here, man? Like, come on, they're gonna Shanghai. they're gonna put the mask on your face and you're gonna lose all of your willpower and you're gonna do whatever the big clown in the sky says. It's gonna be awesome. Do you think big clown in the sky is just Lanash playing like a real good joke? I like, don't. I th I think hey, buddy, leave your soul stone at home. It's fine. I'll protect you if you die. It'll be nom, great. Nom. It'll be awesome. I I do think Kegarak, uh, Sigarak, Chegarak is Cedric. Uh, Cedric. Cedric. Thank you. Is uh, doing all the things he says. He's just blasting about in the webway, posting on Reddit, um, trolling Slanesh. You know, going into his Discord and typing mean things. Um, whatever the the book of light says, it's not very clear. 
I was actually pretty sad about that when I read the the lore section of the ninth the ninth edition codex. The eighth edition one leaves off with like the book of light has opened, all the chains have released, and something big is going to happen, and then nothing did. Uh, we got that article about how uh, clowns put a big crystal on a planet, and the commissar were like, "Oh God, what is happening?" And then the entire planet <laughs> died because uh, there was a demon infestation, and all the guards were like, "Woo!" This is the coolest stuff in the world. Those guys dance so good, and they all, you know, their soul stuff obliterated the planet for fun. They brought it. Um, yeah. They were Imagine like, the being a world. guardsman on that planet after weeks of demonic incursion and assaults. Yeah. Right. And you're like, oh, more Xenos. Oh, but it's the Eldari. They'll help us. And it's just an interpretive dance group, just like who's standing in front of you, do their moves. They're like, right. oh, we saved you. And then they leave. Yeah. They're like, well, we don't really trust the aliens. And then one guy in the back is like, do a flip. And then he does like a triple backflip. <laughs> and they're like, whoa, whoa, now we trust you. That was crazy. Dang. Wow. Dude. I love the class. He did a flip. He did a flip. <laughs> he did, he did like 30 feet in the air. You see that? Oh, was nuts. I, dude, I did. It was crazy. <laughs> I've never seen such acrobatic grace. I've never seen someone just defy gravity Except... for fun. When John did the split, <laughs> oh, true, right? Yeah. John, John can flip higher than a harlequin. I have right there. absolutely cannot. And if I have to go and learn gymnastics just to prove you, like, oh, and then ruin this joke, you know, I've gone to greater lengths to ruin something. Uh, Nanto oh. Phantom Danny is asking, Hey, ask Danny about the Prince of Sins. True, is it good? I think it is for that. Uh, that's the um. The upgrade for the solitaire, where you, he's minus one to hit all the time. Oh, and no real. Yeah, I yeah, think that's that good. one's spicy. Yeah, if, that's, that's what I take. So I would take that, or I also kind of like the deep strike one. Um, I think that's I think that's decent. Yeah, uh, just I, you, since he can't ride in a boat. Uh, oh, true. Because he has no sedate, like right. just being able to get him kind of across the table with without with limited interference is pretty cool. I never deep strike stuff anymore, ever. Uh, in any, in basically in any game, every time I have or my opponent has, it's just been a flat mistake. Um, so I, ne I don't really consider those abilities anymore. Maybe I should take a look, maybe I should take a second look with the with the clowns. Uh, but I basically, uh, in my brain, just delete that uh, as an option uh, by default. Um, so I'm not super hyped about that one. I do love Prince of Sins though. I think, yes. I think that's good. Uh, the the man still has his three up invuln, which. Praise under the big clown in the sky. Can't believe he kept that. By the way, amazing. Yes. Um, so like getting more durability on him, especially when he runs, you know, twenty four inches across the table and just punks some dude, um, is great. Is anything to make him more annoying? I love that. Yeah. Pirouettes um, twenty four inches across the table. Pirouettes, mm -hmm. dance move. I would know yeah. with my knowledge of. So oh, yeah, John, why don't you tell us about it as right, yeah. a resident dance expert? I and need just, every time you every time you move that model. You must say the word pirouette. Or I pirouette. need you to bust out your tap dancing shoes, dude. I need yeah, to see them right now. I know if you have them. If you're playing uh, Harlequins and you're not wearing tap dancing shoes throughout your entire game, you're just a poser. You're just jumping no, I'm on giving, that army. I'm giving my opponent the tap dancing shoes because I will make them the clown. <laughs> Still your army's good. Psychological warfare. Oh, you're playing Harlequins? Oh, yeah, but this is for you. And you hand them like this a red nose and a clown wig. Like, what's this for? It's like, oh, because you're about to be a clown you're gonna by how clown poorly you're going to play against me. Yeah, oh, yeah. and then I'm going to lose really bad because I just haven't played clowns in like a year. Um, That's so sad. I love Alexa that army so much, dude. Uh, what makes True. you love that army? Because we, we just, like, less than a month and a half ago talked about the importance uh, of for you to really have fun in 40k. To pare down to, like, one or two armies to really focus on. Uh, I agree with that, and, yeah. Yeah, and now we're, we're, we're cuckoo for Harlequins. Uh, so yeah. what's drawing you into them? Well, part of it is my untreated ADHD, which uh, forces me <laughs> to army hop. Sorry, as much I shouldn't physically. laugh at that, but <laughs> uh, but it's yeah, funny because our medical system's fun joke. <laughs> yeah, it's most most of it is my un untreated medical uh, disorder that forces me to army hop as much as physically possible. But also, it's because the me the army is mechanically. Uh, one of the most fun armies in the game to play, just kind of flat. Um, I don't think, and I don't think I've ever had as much fun with any other army, um, even coming close. They hit really hard. They have a lot of movement shenanigans. If you play wrong with them, they die, which you know, feels more fair than 
custodes for one. Um, and they have a lot of stupid tricks. Um, I love uh, the 30 minutes of explaining. I have to go through every single game of, uh, yes, I can follow you after you fall back or yes, I can fall back and shoot and charge. Uh, I can advance and shoot. My guy can get out of the boat, fight you and then get back into the boat. And then I can double move and stuff like that. I love that. That's super funny. Um, and they, uh, I haven't played them in a while, mostly because they've been kind of bad a little bit. If you're super dedicated there, I think they've always been great. But if you're not like me, um, who just constantly army switches all the time, if you don't have a lot of reps, you just kind of uh, eat pant and die a lot, yeah. uh, which I was not prepared to do. Uh, so I <laughs> played worse armies. I don't know. Um, <laughs> What was I even? What, was what, I what Taylor likes to do pre-game to save some time is he just tells right. you what his Harlequins cannot do, um, and that uh, we find that saves fifteen wow. to thirty minutes of explanations. That's it's, a long explanation. Uh, take a meaningful cover save. Be above strength <laughs> four. I think that, I think that's about it. Uh, <laughs> that's not true. Well, for the truth. Well, Danny, I, what what else can Harlequins not do? Uh, all right. Uh, Harlequins are legally not allowed to walk backwards. Hmm. Not true. I do that all the time. They have to pirouette backwards. No, yeah. That, or moonwalk. Yeah. True. Yeah, you, Which you is like walking models forwards, backwards. but oh backwards at the same time. My cat <laughs> is attacking my laptop. Um, also, <laughs> Harlequins are not allowed to uh, move off of the table and then back onto the table. Uh, oh, so permissive rule set. Not yeah, like yeah, this. sorry. Um, <laughs> God, I made a mistake. So, so uh, go into that a little. Say, say for example, if you're say the co-host uh, of a semi-popular frontline gaming network show who might right. not understand what that means, uh, wh- what do you mean by they can't go off the table? Oh, so I mean that they can't like leave the the area of the table, like go to where your dice are stored. Uh, one turn and then come back on the next turn. Sorry. So, do you want me to explain it like I'm talking to Seth? Yeah, that would be. Oh, well, okay. we can't. We can't Sorry. say Seth's name. Meth yeah, moisture. Thank you, Rainbow Sparkles. If, yeah. uh, if we're gonna talk uh, to Meth Moisture, it's you can't. You can't have their base hang off the table at all. Um, unlike you know, someone might do with their Tau models or their orcs on occasion, uh, like mm. especially their vehicles. So um, if we were playing planes. 8th edition, they couldn't advance and shoot their assault weapons due to a True. technicality in the wording. Thank you, uh, Internet. I really appreciate that one. The 47-page yeah. long DACA thread on that one was really cool to read. Oh, why are you on DACA? Also, <laughs> they can't... Yeah. They can't take a uh, five-pound uh, fishing weight and uh, throw it at the opponent's models from off of the table to crush right. them. That's not in their rule set. That's I should not have thought about that set. one. So if someone does that to you, don't let them get away with it. Yeah, you hit them with the brick that you brought yeah. just in case yeah. this you happens. Can. I mean, all of this is technically like street 40K, which is something <laughs> we're going to get into in a later. That's, uh, that's far more investigative. investigative we're going to talk about episode. street 40K, uh, probably hey. the most brutal game you've ever played in you your just, entire life. You just play in the parking lot, crush an 11 loco, and pull the knives out when you have a rules disagreement. It's easy. Yeah, it yeah. brings back tank shock. <laughs> Siegler has melted the models of his defeated foe's armies into a crown and he shirtlessly just oh. yells at you before deploying. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but 340k. Before each wow. final game at a tournament, he like runs like a <laughs> a plastic <laughs> like sword knife across yeah. his chest. It's it's terrifying. It's really it really crazy. psychs out all of his opponents. He paints yeah, his face fine. with blood all the time. I don't know why his, he does his that. His classic opening uh, opening line of "All I'm surrounded by is fear and losers." Uh, yeah. He's just he's yeah. brutal. I uh, have brutal I have team. heard I have heard John Lennon say out loud that Siegler is the most physically bloodthirsty member of the Art of War group. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've seen it in person. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's it's terrifying. It uh, something that happened in the game in the book here is all the special fancy Harlequin weapons, like uh, the disturbingly named, the, the kissing, the caress. And, yeah, let's uh, talk about silk, what that actually means, John. The silk cuddle, which I'm assuming yeah, is John. like a different one there. Uh, what no, are those different, different weapons one. and kind of how do they work now? 
Uh, sure. So all of them are strength plus one, minus two, two damage. Um, they all, instead of, you can buy them all separately, but you can only buy certain per squad, usually two, unless you're going to 12, which you never do, because then you get blasted. Um, yeah, they all give you keywords that let you use stratagems, like mm-hmm. a lot of the ninth editions of books have done, right? So one of the, I believe the Embrace gives you Ignore Invulns, the Kiss gives you uh, Sixes to Wound or Mortal Wounds, and I don't remember what the other one does. I have it's, no idea. Uh, you roll a dice for each charging model in the unit, and on a 4+, plus, mm. they do a Mortal Wound. Um, gotcha. You can't combine the Kiss and the Caress stratagems on the same unit in one turn, but you can use the Embrace on with, with either of those strats. Right, why even live for sure? And again, uh, guys, we're talking absolutely. about in-game rules here, uh, not molestation True. in any way. Not yet, dude. Um, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Not yet. As far as what the they do in the lore, uh, they're awesome. The kiss specifically is the funniest cool. one. Uh, it ha- it's we did have team. a we did have a specific question on Facebook here about oh. the kiss okay. and a certain uh, Peter the Falcon wanting you to explain uh, what the Harlequin's kiss is. Oh my god, I was doing that. So what it is? It's a big long tube, right? Uh, and they so um, for the longest time the it was only AP minus one. Despite it specifically being designed to puncture armor, I don't think GW really gets how armor penetration kind of stuff works. Like, rapier-type weapons have had bad AP traditionally, which is just silly. Anyway, um, stab. So they, they they put the big tube in, right? They, they goes in your body, and then they pull the lever. And then the tube shoots out about 100... Uh, about a hundred meters of um, of monofilament wire, and then just fucking swip swap whip whaps around oh. in your body. Was, I was allowed another one. I was physically allowed, you. legally allowed to say the f word. Um, <laughs> yeah, it it scrambles your insides, you know, with a bunch with a bunch of wires, and then you just kind of fall over like a the stupid skin bag organless man that you are, and all of your organs pour out of the holes in your body, which I assume there are a bunch of your fighting clowns. Um, they can also oh, there's at least seven. There is at least seven. Um, not represented in the rules. They can just shoot the wires out, uh, not inside of people, and like use them as a whip, <laughs> which they've done in a couple of stories. Uh, can they please... Spider Man with them? Uh, they already just do that uh, with their anti gravity belts. They just like run on. Like one of the best Harlequin stories actually is um, a solitaire chasing a planetary governor. Across like an entire star sector, uh, <laughs> the governor would move to a planet, and then the Harlequin would like peer in his window and kill all of his guards. Uh, after running up his like palatial mansion like a hundred feet, just straight up, uh, he'd like peek in, slaughter everything, and then the guy would get away. And mm-hmm. then they just repeat it like Wiley e. Coyote and I assume whatever he chases. I assume it's a chicken. I don't know. I did not. I'm not. I'm not it's a road road runner. Runner. old enough. No, no, I don't believe you. Warhammer Plus. Why there isn't a Harlequin versus Imperium oh, Governor cartoon series on your channel right now? So who knows? It gets it gets better because uh, the governor gets so desperate that he calls in some favors, and they send an Evasor in to fight to to fight the Solitaire, and so like the climactic battle is the Solitaire versus the Evasor. And uh, the the solitaire rips out the Eversor's heart and then hurls it into the building that uh, uh, that the governor is, is in, and it goes nuclear, right? Because it's an Eversor, and then they all die. It's awesome. It's my favorite Harlequin story, I think. Uh, Death we by don't. Irony. Yeah, we we don't talk about the one in Blood of the Phoenix. Uh, that story <laughs> flatly is not real. It didn't happen. <laughs> So, again, we're jumping all over the place, and all the best episodes do that. Uh, What is Blood of the Phoenix, uh, story-wise? I I just said it's not real, but um, if it was real... If it was, though, yeah. If it was real, what it would be... It's just a bad story. Yeah, relevant to the Harlequin part, what it would be about would be uh, Shalaxi Hellbane showing up with uh, five of, you know, the best elf elf combatants that aren't Phoenix Lords. Well, one of them is... um, in a room, and she's like, ah, oh, I'm Slash, I'm here to kill you all! And then she kills the Vizark, but he gets better. And then she kills uh, Yvrain, she gets better. Uh, and then she cuts Solitaire in half. He doesn't get better, despite being allied with Yvrain. Or, please? It's fine? I don't know. Uh, He's not Yunari. He yeah. could have been. I don't, that rubric that she revived wasn't Yunari. Just put my man back together. I know he's been bisected, but like, she was doing that as a joke, <laughs> as a, as a prank, as a meme. Yeah, uh, it's a prank, then, bro. Just a yeah. prank. 
And so, hey, after- Aaron, want to see something funny? <laughs> <laughs> want to see it? Want to see this? Look at I this. didn't put the clown back together, but I put the regular guy back together. <laughs> Unforgivable, dude. Got I him. Hate it. Yeah. So then the Yinkarn shows up, and then Shalaxi owns the Yinkarn, like stabs uh, the Yinkarn fully through with her big spear. And then Jane Zar, who is also there, and Lilith, who is also there, uh, manage to finish it off as it's like grinding its spear into the Yinkarn, laughing at it. And then as it's fading away, it's like, ah! It was only 10% of my power, you fools. Also, oh, the no. big MacGuffin you've been looking for is in Celestial Palace and you'll never get it. And she sounded just like that. Um, so, yeah. You always just... got to love things where it's like, ah, you fool. You didn't achieve your aim at all, even though you thought you did. Yeah, so it was just a really incompetent power level display, uh, which was lame. And then it also, like, hard ended the Yanari storyline. Because their whole thing is they're gonna they're trying to get the the crone swords to do a thing, do a big right. magic, and bring uh bring you need into the galaxy without having to actually all die as a species. Right, it and seems then, like a like a foolish thing to do. Right. So at the end of this supplement, this meaningless supplement that does nothing, um, Sirlaxi reveals that the crone, the last crone sword they've been looking for is in the prince is in the palace of Slanesh. You know. A place that elves don't do well in historically. Mm. Um, kind of not possible to get at ever, really, under any circumstance that the elves can do. Um, so that storyline just kind of ended, just just gone. It's over now. Um, the third book wasn't even out, so I don't know. Seems silly maybe to me. They just need to go get the sword back before the ninth edition demon book drops. It seems like they're going to have a much easier time of it before then. That's possible. Right. That makes sense. I I would favor all of the elves versus a demon in the tabletop right now, so that probably <laughs> works in the lore. I think that would be fine. Uh, uh, Tamadachi, a uh, much better joke than I have ever written in, in months for this year. Uh, he says, the reason the solitaire wasn't healed is because you can't take solitaires in a Yanari army. Mm, true. That's what I said. Big fan. Oh, you did? Me. Man, I'm yeah, an ass. But he's not Yanari. Damn, dude. It's... Ah. Uh, the worst. I get it now. Oh, I get it. Sorry, it was a veiled reference to the fact that in game you can't take them. In game, you cannot do the thing. IRL, anyway. <laughs> IRL, you can do whatever you want. In IRL by, life, this, by the way, in 40k real life. In so, IRL life. As we're wrapping up here from this this all over kind of thing, getting getting back oh, to the God. game state here. This is kind of for both of you guys here, starting with Taylor. Um, how do you see Harlequins kind of as the most popular, prettiest girl coming out of this Eldari Codex True. faring uh, from an FAQ from this book? Do you see them kind of being more powerful, less powerful? Where do you see you shaking up? Oh, man, uh, I think troops are going to get core and I don't. Oh, one thing that will get fact, I think for sure, is the amount that you can actually take in a traveling players detachment in other uh Eldari armies, because currently one of my best, one of my friends, I almost said best friend, but I don't know if we're on that level. Let me know in the comments. One of my friends, Anthony, um, <laughs> he uh, his list is like 500 points of Dark Eldar and 1500 points of clowns in a patrol, and that army is counted as a Dark Eldar army that can take Dark Eldar secondaries and use all the extra warlord trait and Relic Dark Eldar stratagems. The only thing that army loses is Luck of the Laughing God, and I don't know if that's going to get fact. It doesn't feel intended. Um, it's It feels very raw instead of RIA. I don't want to say raw. It seems silly. Um, but that's those are the two things that I would fact for sure. I didn't really see anything else in the book uh, besides like <laughs> the typesetting uh, that needed to be fixed. Um, but I haven't read it super the thoroughly. Setting. Yeah, there, I'll send you a screenshot later. Uh, there's a oh, yeah. like the Void Weaver stats or like the stat block is here, yeah. and then the, the words weird. are like right here. It's very strange. Um, so other than that, I think it'd be I think it's gonna get stronger really um, with the addition of core. Uh, and I think the army is probably too good in the context of fair armies. In the context mm-hmm. of the meta we currently reside in, which is a, a nightmare hellscape. Um, I don't think they're they're gonna t- uh, take out Tau or Custodes. I don't feel like they're stronger than those armies. I think they're I feel like they're good against them if you build light or dark for Custodes or Taus respectively. 
don't think they're better than them, though. I don't know. I may be wrong. Why would you point out that thing about the Star Weavers? This is the worst <laughs> thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Have you not seen the meme about that? Oh, no. Man. No, oh. I haven't. I've been in darker corners of the internet. Uh, Danny, is that something you would uh, would follow along with and agree with for FAQs, or do you see anything else happening with them? Um, I can see maybe some of the range stacking stuff going away from light, uh, like to affect the light stuff. Oh, sure. Um, to like make it so basically because you can take the right now you can take the sh- uh, uh, the shadow seer and make everything around it like minus or minus count it six. six inches further away. Yeah. It makes it so you have like <laughs> it makes it so you have to be within six inches to ignore their uh, can't be hit <laughs> on uh, better than a four plus, right. um, which is probably not right. Probably too strong. Yeah. Probably. Just failed um, successfully. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, there's also the other, there's also like a psychic power too that you can make it so that you can't shoot at them if you're within 18 inches, which it makes stacks. it like 12 inches, which 12, is like yeah. probably uh, not great. You don't normally see abilities that kind of like add like 50% additional like <laughs> right. uh, like to, to or 50% additional power to like a trait. I don't know. Um, the don't other know. thing, I think eventually, and I don't, this isn't going to be like straight off the bat, but Void Weavers probably shouldn't be 90 points a model. Like, they're really good. They should probably be, like, 100. Yeah, really like good. And, like, it's, like, a stupid little change or something like that that I can see. They're probably yeah. a little under-costed for what they are. Probably. They're, I think they're, I think their gun is pretty good. It's not super crazy. Um, but their body is really, really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So their body, their gun isn't super crazy, but you get to shoot it for the whole game. Uh, exactly those, exactly because those things never die right yeah I, yeah it's, i think they're probably a bit it's really it. hard to get rid of them i think like probably yeah too hard, dude, for sure no rerolls on them minus one to hit if they're light you're only hitting on a four right. um and like they have a four plus invulnerable save as well like they're they're pretty hard to get rid of but everything else seems yeah. like it's it's fine like and, and then, like the troops are like eight they're like 19.1 wood infantry yeah yeah that's, that's probably fine yeah that's that's fine yeah, and then, and then Nurgle Matthew, pass along screenshots. I'm going to very professionally uh, just hold this up right here. Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah. about, dude. Well, you yes. can see the quality here. Look, it's like oh. this is the Star Wars this moderately, I I love it. This moderately off center. You number. can't even, God, I mean, you can see it because I know what I'm looking for. Uh, everyone, just like this channel. show, uh, the quality is eh, questionable Extreme. at times, but there's a joke Extreme. there somewhere. Um, before we go, last thing for both of you guys, uh, Harlequin units, there's not a ton of them, but what are, like I said, the, the, the top unit, the worst unit, the, yeah, okay, that's fine unit. I think uh, starting we with talked about the top units that we, we feel. Yeah, yeah. I think the worst unit is the earlier. desert, sure. Um, so there's only seven units. Yeah. Eight. Right. Is there eight? Shit. I'm sorry. I think there's, I think there's eight. Troop Master, Solitaire, Death Jester, Other Character, Troop, Void Weaver, Bike, Whoa, yeah, eight. eight. Bam. Okay. Yep. So what's the worst and what's just okay? I think the only one that's okay is the Death Jester. I think it's fine. And I think that also makes it the worst unit in the book. I guess technically um, it's the worst. Yeah. I don't think he's bad. Um, so, I, mean, I take I take one in every list for sure, but um, I, yeah, I think that they're to- like there's a warlord trait that lets you count something as being an auto six, and then there's another ability they can take where a six to hit on the ranged weapon for the death jester counts as th- uh, three hits. Yes, sir. Um, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, strike six, can, thirty inches minus two, shoot characters, and and you do that after you roll the hit. So if you you have a fifty fifty shot oh. of rolling another six anyway. So you just roll the hit. If you get two hits, then that's going to be like eight hits automatically. Maybe right. probably like a good chance at nine. So like super nuts. That's kind of a dead character. Probably. Right. For sure. And that's good. I wouldn't take three of them in a boat. No. Um, <laughs> that's bad. Don't do that. But but like every other unit is super good. Um, troops are good. The characters yeah. are all great. Besides the yeah. Chester, he's just fine. He's just fine. Um, the other, I think Skyweaves are really good. Minus yeah. one to hit, like Mirage Launchers now work in combat as well. Uh, yeah. I don't think the no hit, hit reroll works in combat. I know the minus one to hit. I think does it's from now. range attacks. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the minus one to hit works all the time, which is just a huge buff to those units. Um, and troops were already minus one in combat, so like the whole army is minus one to hit in combat all the time. Um, which is and, great. 
Yeah, the whole army is a four uh, four plus armor set or four plus invulnerable. Excuse me. Or better. Uh, or better, right? I think it's, I think the army is really really good. I def, I definitely think the take that it's stronger than craft world is correct personally. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And like I think like typically speaking, like kind of the army construction you're going to see if you're if you're going to see like pure harlequins is going to be like right. one of each character, maybe an extra troop master. Sure. And then, like, a solitaire, probably a death jester, maybe, like, four or five squads of troops, and then right. two or three squads of void weavers, and then, like, probably four star weavers. Bikes to fill, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe one, one or two fill. squads of bikes, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I I think my list is, like, troop master, shadow seer, shadow seer, four or three units of troops with fusions and all the weapons, a big ten man, because I think the big ten man is valuable. Because uh, five Harlequins don't actually kill a ton, not really in combat. Um, so I think I feel like you really need the the ten man, um, and then nine bikes, three boats, and uh, I think six void weavers. I feel like this is gonna be a very standard list construction um, for all th- for all three Sadas. Actually, uh, you might see uh, there's only eight units in the book, right? Yeah. So that's why oh, we're not showing, a, showing off a bunch of lists tonight, guys, because like. It would be pretty boring and repetitive, I feel like. Yeah, Yeah. like, I have less troops and more bikes, or I have less bikes and more Void Weavers, or, you know. (laughs) There is some humor in saying we're going to present six Harlequin lists, and they're all just exactly the same list. (laughs) The only thing that's different is we say it's a Twilight list, or a Dark list, or a Light list. Um, Right. Danny, any... Sorry. Oh, Oh, sorry. And then the Troop Master takes a... uh, uh, st- stupid crystal pistol instead of the fusion in one of the lists. Oh the right. I love the term crystal pistol. Crystal so pistol. Much. Crystal Holy pistol. That's cow. what it is. Uh, Denny, do you have any final questions here for Taylor uh, before we send him off on his way? Um, off to cozy night night bedtime. Uh, Taylor. Yes. What's your what's your? Do you think that Harlequins are going to be taken a lot by themselves, or do you think that they're going to be more of an allied force accompanying? Craft worlds or Drukari more often. What's I think? On that? I think nerds will take uh, them as allies more often, but I think pure is stronger personally. Um, yeah. I don't want craft world in my army. Um, I don't actually think that they offer a lot that the clowns need. Uh, Drukari is. <laughs> I like Anthony's list because it gives you something durable on the backfield and also mm-hmm. herd the prey. And herd the prey is just kind of the best secondary in the game still. Um, it's so, good. having having access to that in in, in fifteen hundred points of clowns is really good, in my opinion. Um, yeah, but I think that will be fact. I think personally, I think pure clowns is the strongest. I've always thought that about that army. I have never wanted friends. Please, please get out of my face. Uh, just just the mass people for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and like conversely, like I was going to say, like I think that. Uh uh like i'm taking instead of aspect warriors for close combat i'm just taking to take clowns in my craft worlds left right because like they're just i think they're better than aspect I think warriors. They're just better yeah dude for sure um d- like dark harlequins is yeah. everything that uh an aspect warrior wants to be they do all of the things yep. they have the scorpion mortal wounds they have advance in charge of the of the banshees they have their really good influence save they can do mortal wounds like the scorpions. They do all the things that you want. Yep. So a craft world list, I think, really wants clowns. I don't think a clowns list wants craft world. Yeah, agreed. Cool, amazing. I'm, extreme, I'm extremely handsome and smart. I have I yep. have heard that said before. You sure? And the the big news again coming out of tonight's episode, uh, Taylor Peterson calls Anthony <laughs> Vanilla a giant nerd. Yeah, yeah, I have. And for, that they're yeah. best friends. So yeah, good to know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> best BFFs. <laughs> but also, he's a giant nerd. Her Taylor Peterson. Right. And I hope you heard he it here first. Stairs. Man, yeah. Screw that Taylor Peterson also, kid. Also, yeah. uh, Hello. He's gonna yes. Oh, my God. He plays next. Yeah, I love to yeah. cheat, dude. Yeah. Cheating is my favorite yeah. thing Perfect. in the world. Right. Yeah. These are, uh, if so you, much. if you, yeah, if you look in the codex and it's written in Sharpie core, uh, it's probably not true. Oh, man, it's, that's better than the other thing I wrote in the clown codex. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, Danny. thank you so much for, for coming. Taylor, thank you so much for coming in, talking about yeah. Harlequins again. Uh, Barely, thank you all. Yeah. 
but we, we kind of touched on the things. Uh, it's kind of it was nice, honestly, having you on to talk about the game state in the game uh, because you are uh, very knowledgeable uh, about the game uh, and things in there. Not just the lore. You're like, a, a, what's less than the triple threat? Double threat? Like he's got the lore. He's got think, the game. A threat. I think it's a. I think it's a triple D threat. I think is the, is yeah. the terminology. He's 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 just the threat. Got it. He'll give you clown <laughs> shoes at your game. He'll tell you you're going to lose. He's a fun guy. I will. Be uh, back, yeah. <laughs> uh, Danny and I will be back next week. Uh, hopefully uh, earlier bad time, earlier bad channel. Who knows? We might find out a little later on that we left the graphics card out of the streaming computer again. Um, <laughs> for Grim After Dark, um, uh, we've got Taylor here, obviously. Danny, I don't even know how to wrap things up anymore. Um, but Just we will the stream. Up. Well, we'll see you Monday. In the middle of talking, just close the stream. It's fine. (laughs) 